Thank you very much, uh, Jeremy. I was uh, holding up to you uh, one of the rare EXO laptops, and uh, I'm going to talk about work that I did over 10 years ago, but I want to bring it up to date. So, I was able with uh, students at the University of Lincoln, uh, having obtained two EXO laptops, to have student projects using the EXO laptop. And the very first project I had was work to uh, create a, a codex, uh, we called our project codex, a collaborative development for the EXO laptop, live CD allowing uh, the uh, software on the uh, EXO, the sugar system, to uh, uh, be run off a CD. And uh, this work was carried out by uh, our student, James Monroe. And uh, uh, you can see he was able to um, uh, create a, a version of sugar using an emulator that ran under Ubuntu. And that was followed in the next year by two students. So we did increase, and we called this project Codex 2, uh, two students who worked on the EXO laptop. Um, in the meantime, uh, the sugar system, which was is the software developed for the EXO. The EXO is, at the time, in the uh, late noughties, so to speak, was called the greenest computer uh, ever designed. And its designer is a woman, and you can read about it. Uh, but, uh, and it was uh, widely distributed around the world. But even more widely distributed was the sugar system, the software which ran on the EXO. And people created, uh, instead of having a live CD, uh, sugar on a stick. So it was sugar on a USB stick that anyone could use and run on any laptop. Um, and uh, the uh, two students contributed to that project. It was interesting that having students contribute to, um, all three of the students contribute to open source projects, created a little bit of conflict for the students because obviously uh, they had their academic work as well as contributing to the projects. And uh, sometimes they felt that um, the uh, other people on the project didn't quite understand that they were just undergraduate students and couldn't necessarily give all the time that the others uh, would have liked them to. So, of course, being academics, um, with my colleague uh, Andrea Capalupi, who also helps supervise the students uh, working on these projects, we wrote a paper which we presented at the open source uh, software conference about undergraduate research opportunities and detailing the results of uh, these projects, as well as other open source projects and uses that we uh, made of software. And, and of course, I presented this work and this is there's a video online which you can I'll, I'll give a reference to where uh i'm speaking at the ada lovely lovelace colloquium in leeds and uh proselytizing uh, about the exo and the potential for students to work developing software for it so the project one laptop per child is still alive. And uh, although when you uh, view the website, some of the entries are not very current. However, 
Sugar on a Stick is an active open source project and uh, anyone can contribute to it. And in particular, Sugar Labs make available uh, a number of uh, implementations of Sugar on a Stick. And also, I was really pleased to see that um, there's a full sugar environment uh, for the Raspberry Pi. And I think that should uh, give a lot of opportunities for uh, people in the UK who are doing work in schools with Raspberry Pis to take advantage of sugar. I'm not, I haven't got a slide about sugar, but I would really uh, recommend that you have a look at it because this is a, uh, a version of Linux uh, that is entirely based around the uh, theories of Seymour Papert, and it has a number of applications that students can, uh, in primary and uh, uh, secondary schools uh, can use in developing software. And they're really quite widespread. There's, a, of course, there's a Python app, a Python development environment, but also applications for making music. And uh, if you have a network of XO systems, uh, they use a mesh network for communicating. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of potential for doing uh, interesting work in distributed computing. So my ninth slide is I I wanted to do more proselytizing for the one laptop per child and our work on XO when I was at the University of Lincoln. And uh, the uh, I was particularly keen to emphasize that it's not a laptop project. It's much more to do with uh, giving children access to uh, software and hardware. And uh, I'd like to finish with, uh, this is a rather long quote, but uh, in my advocacy, the idea of bread and laptops that came from bread and roses, the uh, that's a women's late uh, mill workers. That was a, 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 a song advocating that they wanted uh, <clears throat> bread as well as roses. And it occurred to me that uh, with the uh, work on the one laptop per child, uh, it's a, a program that was uh, giving people bread and roses and as well as the laptops, so uh, enabling children to improve their minds, bodies, and hearts. And, uh, here are some references. This is the original uh, video. Here's our academic paper, uh, the projects, and also I have put this, uh, I resurrected this uh, article, which was just in a university newsletter and put it on my website. And uh, that's the end of my talk. You might wonder why I have resurrected this work. It's because um, I'm working at Greenwich as a part-time professor. And I really thought I would use this to uh, get some students involved in the sugar work. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Cornelia. Um, I would encourage you all to um, uh, ask any questions on the public chat. Um, 